the power connect sessions so it is my pleasure to welcome uh, vinod da who is the father of pentium to today's uh, silicon valley nit alumni network meet so please have a seat our keynote speaker does not need introduction and uh, he is well known all over the world and uh, as you know like all of us know him as uh, father of pentium our uh, today's uh, discussion will be more focused beyond pentium we would like to know more about uh, uh, vinod dam vinod dam came to us in 1975 to pursue higher studies with 8 dollars in his pocket not only he added a lot of zeros after 8 in the last 35 years but also he helped hundreds of people to to pursue as well as realize their dreams so he was a chip engineer at intel and we all know like what he did at intel in the following years he later joined intel rivals next gen and uh, AMD in 90s and uh, a surprise like Intel lawyers allowed uh, Vinod Dam to join an Intel rivals company. Uh, he then uh, became a CEO CEO of uh, Silicon Spice. That's where like uh, he got into the entrepreneurship and he sold the company to Broadcom for 1.2 billion dollars in 2000 and he became a venture capitalist. that's a other part of his uh, current life uh, he became a venture capitalist uh, first he was a vc at uh, new path ventures and currently he is a he is a vc at uh, nea indo us ventures where his aim is to uh, give back something to his native india so all right like uh, let's start the q and a session and the first half hour i will be asking questions and the second half of our uh, it will be open to all the nitians to ask questions yeah i think i just wanted to yeah. can you hear me yeah. yeah i just wanted to uh, correct a couple of things say okay. i am not the father of pentium i think by today's stand i'll be a great grandfather of pentium <laughs> <laughs> there have been many pentiums born and like i tell my wife sometimes you do great things in life and nobody acknowledges you and sometimes you do great things in life and you get more acknowledgement than is due so by somehow claiming we paint him for that i even get association with other paintings that i did not do so i wanted to be uh, clear about that and uh, the thing about uh, the lawyers not bothering me when i went to intel's enemies uh, you're coming from india you know, you're a socialist you always <laughs> want to be the level playing field There is no such thing as anybody should get away with something more than others. So I always rooted for the underdogs all my life. I still do. And uh, the fact that I was not an engineer, sitting down and writing a code or writing a micro code for the pen and chip, uh, was very helpful in being going over the other side because that's what they are looking for. That's the family jewels they want to protect. Uh, clearly, they also want to protect the strategies and customers and pricing. So, to that extent, I did get a letter from the lawyer, uh, a gentle and firm reminder to always remember where I should be. So, yeah, there were a few things like that, uh, and we'll talk about all of these things as we go through it. But do give uh, these folks some chance to ask questions because I really came here to really make sure I satisfy whatever is on their mind. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vinod, uh, could you talk about your childhood and what inspired you to pursue engineering and especially uh, chip design? So you know, I'm going to go through the evening, and some of you may not like to hear what you thought you expected to hear. So I apologize, but I'm going to tell you exactly the way it is. Um, I'm an accidental engineer. I really never uh, wanted to be an engineer. I am the youngest of a family of uh, five. 
I have three elder brothers and a sister older than me. I sometimes tell my wife that I think I was the unwanted child. As you grow older, you know, you start looking back in life. You just go through life, you don't even think about life. It's only when you reach my age, you start thinking back, saying, what happened here? And I sometimes really tell, tell her that there were already three boys in the family and there was a girl. I don't think they were looking to have one more boy or a girl for that matter, no Indian. My parents are dead, so I can't ask them this question now. But I'm pretty sure now, increasingly, that I know about me and what happened to my life, that I was kind of uh, left alone. <laughs> and I think in a way it worked well for me. Um, and the confidence I generated being left alone to do what I did and, uh, really worked out well for me. So I uh, loved physics. And after uh, doing my schooling, I enrolled in Delhi University for the physics honors course. And uh, I recall that my uh, one of my brother, he's a retired air marshal in Indian Air Force. He's a doctor, medical doctor. And he was at that time either a flight lieutenant or a flying officer of some junior rank. And he had just come in and brought me a gift of HMT watch, which was a small little gift. And he asked me what I was going to do. And I said, well, I'm going to do physics honors. And he said, after that, and I said, MSc physics honors. And he said, after that, I said, I don't know, PhD. <laughs> and he says, after that, you'll be selling bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really the turning point for uh, my life. Unfortunately, what had happened by then was my father was totally, uh, uh, let's say, a passive player in this whole discussion. <laughs> you know, he was alive at that time. It, it didn't matter to him what was being discussed, and except he only opened his mouth when my brother said, I said, okay, I'll, I'll become a doctor like you because I remember when I was uh, younger and he was into his medicine, I used to prepare his tray for dissecting cockroaches. I used to do all leg work. He used to come and do, do all the. So I said, you know, I have done that halfway there, so I'll become a doctor. He said, no, we don't need to. I guess he didn't want any competition. <laughs> <laughs> so he just, uh, my eldest brother is an MBA, and he was a, uh, a banker. He ran Union Bank of India in daily branches. And uh, my brother said BCom, and my sister did MA, and he was a doctor. And he said, we need an engineer in the family. Literally, this is how the discussion, this is how I became an engineer. <laughs> and to my total uh, disbelief and grief, uh, there were few schools, and I, I honestly had not heard of NIT back then. I didn't know there were NITs. I just knew there were IITs, and there was Delhi College of Engineering, and there were Pilani, so five or ten schools there. And so Rurki and Pilani, my father moved out very quickly because he had no money to send me to the schools. So the only option was Delhi. Luckily for me, it was still open for two weeks, and the, only because I was a domicile of Delhi. That means I was living there, or there was a proof that we were we had a home there. That's how I got in. But the, the, the disbelief or dismay was, um, I guess I wasn't the brightest kid. And when I filled in the form with my brother, he was here only for a weekend. He took me there. We filled the form, he did the guardian signatures. I don't know if you do all those things now anymore or not. On a photograph, they have to sign and all this stuff. And there were three options, mechanical, electrical, and civil. And I told my brother, I'll commit suicide if, he, if I get civil. And mechanical, I hate. Electrical, maybe it's a little bit like physics somewhere. So let me, I, I can, so he said, put that down as number one. And I think I lucked out because of that. Even though my first telegram that came to my home, there was no emails back then or letters, was congratulations, you were gotten into civil engineering. And that's the day I was going to jump off. From <laughs> my brother was gone, I cried, and my father said, OK, let's go ahead and do your physics. Have you uh, de-enrolled yourself? I said, no, I never told the university I'm not coming. He said, oh, just go ahead and do it. So I was actually going to go ahead and go back to my physics Except another telegram came two or three weeks later that said, you are in like And fortunately for me, and I'll tell you through many of these things, they will sound weird to you, but it does happen. You have to prepare, and then things happen, and you just take advantage of them. First time in the history of Delhi College of Engineering, in that particular batch, they were going to select 30 kids for an elective in electronics. <laughs> 